So it's the last presentation before the coffee break, so I'll try to be short and snappy. So this is a work that we developed from WH so side with uh, uh, Francis Mulemba, who's here from the OSL side, and with Malika. Uh, I'm also going to use quite a bit of information that is relevant to the Ethiopian context, so I'm also going to slide a bit quicker on this because you presented already a lot of information today. Um, so, WASH and OCB integration is a topic that you have probably heard before. Um, why the rationale behind this is because OCB has a great, great power in, in bringing us closer to action in the field. It's a great entry point to get in touch with people who are affected by the mm -hmm. disease. Sorry, just to interrupt. Can, can you talk a little closer to the microphone? Thank like you. this? Yes. Thanks. Um, so it's a great entry point for WASH activities and community engagement as well. Um, so the GTFCC has defined a minimum WASH and community engagement package to be delivered in parallel to emergency OCB campaigns, uh, which we have piloted uh, earlier this year. La prochaine, s'il te plaît. Um, so what is in this minimum package uh, to be delivered to households if it's in a household context, it could be that people are displaced, in which case it would probably be in gatherings or in camps. So what we want to deliver as a minimum package is, is safe water, so chlorination of water, either bulk or, or in buckets, distribution of, of safe storage for drinking water in the, in the households, water quality monitoring, basically free residual chlorine, bacteriology is generally not so relevant in an emergency context. And basic hygiene items, mainly soap and, and hand washing facilities, and from the side of community engagement, uh, communication campaigns on, on cholera and wash. This should also include, as mentioned also earlier, uh, a monitoring of what is happened, has happened and, and uh, uh, evaluation of the effectiveness. So it's estimated that the cost of such a minimum wash package would be one US dollar per capita, which represents roughly 20% of the overall cost of an OCB campaign uh, with wash. So next slide, please. So in theory, that's how the design of this intervention is planned. You have the first round of OCV and in parallel the distribution of wash non-food items and, and community engagement activities. After which you go in the field and monitor how the use of these wash NFI has happened. You conduct the second round of OCV a few weeks after, maximum six months. And at the same time you do your OCV coverage survey, you would do a wash assessment. So this is the theory as we have it in the concept. We learned a lot this year when we tried to implement this in Ethiopia. It's not just so easy. First, you need to have funding readily available for all WASH activities to be launched in parallel to the OCV campaign. Money is not always readily available. Uh, then you have to have enough time to plan all these activities, the purchase of the uh, wash NFIs and so on, you have to bring them, you have to distribute them, and you have to have the staff to do this. Also, in emergency context, not always easy to achieve. So then you have to integrate wash specialists and community engagement specialists to your immunization teams, and you have to have a proper coordination mechanism, also between HQ and regional office, uh, at the national level, between the UN, between the government, with the regional health bureau, for example, and EPHI in Ethiopia. I would say, in general, it happens a lot that OCD campaigns are, are planned and that WASH activities are happening in parallel. The problem is that they are not coordinated. That's what we tried to do this year in Tigray. Next, please. So here, a bit of contextual information that, that you already presented quite a bit earlier. So there was a conflict that started at the end of 2020. Uh, the situation deteriorated quite rapidly. We noticed in May that 
basically the health system and, and the wash services were not functioning adequately anymore and that there was a really, really high risk for cholera. Um, so that's when we started planning for the, this OCV and WASH joint activity. Next one, please. Here you see a map of Tigray region with the hotspots in red and orange, and at the same time you have the IDP and refugee gathering points in blue. So you see quite a, a dense area of work if you want to curb cholera and, and control the risks. Um, we had at the time in May a situation where we had at least uh, 2 million of people at risk with very, very, very little access to safe water. So basically the ideal situation for a cholera outbreak. Next, please. Here also information that you saw earlier today. Uh, Tigray is located in the north of Ethiopia. Uh, we have the hotspots that were identified there. And at the moment that we had this humanitarian situation in the north, we had an ongoing outbreak in the south, and we were very afraid that there would be a spread from the south to the north. Next, please. Here also we can see uh, where the campaign was planned. It was quite difficult to plan. We had to know uh, where access was possible, where safety was, was sufficient for us to, to prepare the activities and where there was cold chain. And just then, when we had uh, a vaccination plan, we could start work on the design of the WASH and community engagement activities. So the initial thought was to target around 1 million people with uh, WASH and community engagement activities but we quickly noticed that we had to scale that ambition down. Uh, we had funds, we managed to, to organize a, 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 an emergency funding, but the problem is that if you want to buy such large quantities of, let's say, jerry can soaps and aqua tabs, um, how are you gonna find them? They're not necessarily available on the local market, and even what is available in Addis Ababa is not necessarily available in Tigray. Um, so purchase was an issue, but then, of course, where do you store them and how do you get them to Tigray? How do you dispatch them in Tigray where you need again storage and again transport before distribution? So it was quite a demanding situation. Um, here you can see uh, all the Roredas that were targeted by the OCV campaign on the middle side of the table. And then you can see where WASH NFIs were distributed. So soap in the first column, then jerry cans and aqua tabs. So as you can see, it was not a minimum package that was delivered together, but it was kind of split between the Roredas, which is, first thing, not exactly reflecting the concept, but totally reflecting the reality of the situation. And knowing that we're in a humanitarian situation, better to give something than to give nothing. So we decided we will go for it the best way we can. So for the challenges, the list is of course a bit longer than this, but we decided to focus on the main points. Um, the conflict was still active at the moment of, of uh, the OCD campaign and distribution of WASH and FI, so how, how do you manage to know what is possible and achievable on the ground? Um, cold chain is an issue for OCV, but of, of course impacts uh, wash distribution because we cannot do vaccination where there is no cold chain, therefore we cannot distribute wash items either. Uh, we of course had access issues, telecommunication issues, the, the networks were down most of the time, and s some major uncertainties about uh, where would electricity be available for general work, but also for cold chain. Also, this has a big impact on the mobility of IDPs that were not staying in the same place. They were moving around Tigray as the conflict was evolving, and it was a, a challenge for finding them again uh, for the second round, for example, or it would be an issue uh, to know uh, what, where we would find them and where the needs would be biggest at the time. 
Um, of course, in terms of timing, the OCV request was already launched and approved and we didn't have uh, the WASH NFIs, we hadn't even started the purchase order. So in terms of, of timeliness, <coughs> some, some big challenges, transport already mentioned. And in our case, the lesson learning process was not based on an evaluation of the approach, but how we lived through the implementation of this approach. We never had the chance to go and really check how the targeted people used those WASH NFIs, if the combination of OCB and WASH NFIs was, was effective because we never had simply the option to go and do this evaluation step. So for the future, how would we do better? Uh, the idea is first to have uh, an emergency stockpile not only of OCB but of WASH NFIs. Uh, we have to think strategically where to have it. Uh, we cannot have an emergency stockpile in each and every country, but we could try to have a regional approach. We could try see where the risks are the, the highest and where we could prepare for such a thing, not only in terms of items and storage, but also in terms of, of capacity and preparedness in, in place. Um, the type of wash items, just a simple example, and I think Francis, you can you can maybe, if there is interest later on, give some explanation. We bought a very very large amount of jerry cans in Addis that we brought to Tigre, uh, and they were not collapsible. So these were I don't know how many trucks were these. Sorry, if I remember pretty well, I think it was twelve uh, big trucks. Uh, we double, huh? We double, yes, more. Yes, yes, so you can imagine, it weighs nothing, it's just a massive volume, it's a very long distance. Next time I think we will try to go for collapsible jerry cans if we can. Um, CFE was a very effective funding mechanism, I think it, it proved to be working, at least in our case. Um, and then integration of staff, not only WASH and OCB people, but also logistics, I think without OSL on our side, we would never have even managed to start this. And maybe try to be a bit less ambitious for the next time. Uh, maybe a, an area where it's easier to work in terms of access and security. Maybe go for something smaller. But, I mean, we will try again probably next year and come again to tell them another story. So, um, I don't know, maybe Francis Malika, you want to add some information on this? Thank you very much. It was a very nice uh, presentation. I give the floor maybe to Francis, who was there uh, during the, and who organized this uh, uh, distribution, and I was there after for the, the company. No, uh, thanks, Just I think you covered the main points. Um, uh, we have seen that there were uh, quite a lot of challenges. Uh, and I think by that time, we, we had even made some recommendation of which I think if we have to do the second round today, we have to <laughs> revisit them because mm -hmm. probably they don't uh, hold the floor anymore because the situation has changed. But yeah. I mean, as Dr. Martin and all the people, Dr. Vincent, all the people that went were there, uh, the challenges were there, uh, but I think it was worth trying. Thank you. Thanks, Francis.